Yeah, good morning. Uh, I'm going to present you the uh, Izaki procedure, and part of my talks are pro probably redundant to what Joe Coselli has said, but um, um, I will focus on, on the Papa Artis and Izaki um, issue. So we all knew that the um, uh, different uh, groups um, of uh, which has been classified by Crawford and then modified by, by Safi are very important with regard to uh, post-operative outcome, mortality, and uh, specifically also morbidity uh, with um, spinal cord um, injury. And we also knew for a long time that when patients undergo um, surgery or any treatment um, for thoracoabdominal aortic uh, disease, their outcome is uh, significantly uh, better uh, compared to the patients which uh, don't undergo surgery. So um, comparing the two approaches of interventional and open, and this is a series of um, 352 patients for uh, endovascular repair and 372 for surgical repair, and obviously some, some bias with regard to the um, patient selection as in the endovascular group, uh, the patients were older, more, uh, had more comorbidities uh, and uh, mainly type one and type four, whereas in the surgical group, uh, we had more dissections and more two and three type um, uh, aortic um, pathologies. However, um, there was no um, difference with regard to survival in these groups and no statistically difference with regard to spinal cord ischemia, although uh, some, um, some trend towards the benefit in the um, interventional group. Um, in this um, paper, um, the, uh, they describe the concept of uh, what leads to spinal cord uh, injury. And basically, uh, the pathophysiological uh, mechanism is that you have an increase in ICP and then decrease in spinal cord perfusion pressure. And that's why we use CSF drainage and, and, and other uh, things. So, um, um, looking at the uh, long term results and the outcome in different uh, types of uh, aneurysm pathologies, uh, we see that we um, have difference in mortality. And um, in the group of patients who die, we see that uh, almost one third have also spinal cord injury. And um, importantly, spinal cord injury. Uh, does not um, occur with regard to the uh, extent of the aneurysm disease. Uh, it occurs in the majority of cases Im intermediate, uh, immediately, but also uh, delayed. And uh, in this uh, analysis um, um, of um, uh, patients undergoing thoracoabdominal abdominal repair from uh, Greeb's group, uh, including uh, 858 patients, the overall paraplegia rate was 2.7% and 10% uh, had a delayed um, paraplegia, which was defined uh, of uh, occurring within 48 hours. And they uh, matched and compared these two groups. And uh, one important aspect is that the mean arterial pressure was relatively too low for mean pre-op arterial pressure. And that's why we uh, closely look at the arterial pressure in patients undergoing thoracoabdominal abdominal artery repair before surgery and um, just the post optic pressure we want to achieve on ICU for the first couple of days um, with regard to this pressure. So even a, a normal mean arterial pressure is probably not enough in this group who are hypertensive pre-op to um, um, achieve adequate um, perfusion of the spinal cord. Uh, Randall Greaves group uh, under the lead of Christian Etz also showed nicely in this um, group of 99 patients um, um, which they divided into a um, one stage and two stage pair with a mean interval of five years that the uh, two stage um, approach is um, able to decrease uh, the rate of paraplegia and paraparesis uh, significantly. And this has also been shown in the interventional group. Um, here the um, uh, a stage repair was able to reduce uh, spinal cord uh, ischemia by tenfold. So this kind of concept of a stage repair then was um, um, adopted. You've seen the blood supply, uh, which is an important aspect, and the three different sources of the um, blood supply of the spinal cord and the concept of the collateral network. And um, this kind of stage 
um, approach can be imitated by occluding um, segmental arteries and spinal cord arteries. And you have seen this plastic cast as well, and is a beautiful demonstrate the concept of the collateral uh, network. And actually, we take this in advantage as we uh, routinely see now uh, perform news monitoring on the uh, musculus erector spinae in the thoracic and lumbar area. And uh, intraoperatively, we measure um, the, uh, um, the blood supply and, um, of, of this muscle, which correlates to the blood supply of the um, spinal cord. So the um, Misake procedure stands for minimally invasive stage segmental artery coil embolization. And the two actually demonstrates that uh, in the majority of cases, you don't um, need not only one um, coiling procedure, but um, up to uh, three in the, in, the, um, in the trial and sometimes even more in, in other patients. And this is a concept. So the, um, the arteries are, are coiled uh, interventionally and um, uh, extensive studies from Randall Greaves could, could show that on the left-hand side in, in pigs where you um, sacrifice these arteries at one stage um, and uh, on the right-hand side you sacrifice it in a two-stage, so um, starting um, with lumbar artery um, sacrification and then after seven days you uh, sacrifice the thoracic arteries and all pigs uh, basically um, recovered and hasn't had paraplegia, which is demonstrated by the modified Tarlov score, which basically means that everything about six, uh, the um, pigs had complete recovery. Multiple <laughs> papers have been published uh, from Randall Greep's group under the lead of uh, Christian Etz. And um, uh, one important aspect with regards to coil embolization is that you need to coil uh, the arteries um, at their origin. And this is um, the technique how we um, perform it uh, in, in lighting and how it's performed uh, at the most centers who participate. Um, so it's for elective patients with a high risk of um, spinal cord um, ischemia uh, under local anesthesia with a percutaneous transfemoral approach. Uh, patients don't get uh, CSF drainage during this procedure. However, they will uh, get it routinely at least at our institution. Um, um, during the surgical procedure, and we monitor the patient for three days on our um, intermediate care unit. And again, we try to keep the blood pressure high. We experienced that some patients um, developed some sort of back pain during the procedures. We stopped the procedure then, and um, we wait for a while, um, monitor them, and then probably after a while, they come back for the second stage. And again, um, maintenance of uh, adequate blood pressure is a key issue. So uh, after one to three Misake sessions, then we proceed either with the open or endovascular approach. And this is an example how this kind of coiling is performed. This is our uh, head of uh, pediatric cardiology these days. Now it's also performed by the interventional radiologist or angiologist or whoever is familiar with this kind of technique. Um, the segmental arteries are, are located. And here um, it's the lumbar third on the, on the right side, which is intubated and then, um, and then coiled with multiple coils. And then followed by the same segmental artery on, on the left side. So the first men uh, study or um, procedure was uh, done in, in Hamburg um, and uh, Christian Etz was involved and then um, the next series of patients was uh, done in Leipzig University um, in the uh, Department of Angiology and this included um, 57 patients with endovascular um, repair. And you can see here that up to um, five sessions in one patient was necessary for adequate um, um, closing the all relevant um, segmental arteries. And here the distribution of, of type and extent of uh, aortic aneurysm in the uh, majority of cases type, type 3 and 47.3%. And none of the uh, 54 patients alive after complete occlusion or after the Misaka procedure developed um, spinal cord ischemia. So it's a promising concept, but 
obviously you need more evidence or so randomized controlled trial was initiated and you've seen this is the Papa artist trial it's uh, um, you funded and uh, funded from the German Research Foundation and Papa artist stands for paraplegia prevention and aortic aneurysm repair by thoracic abdominal staging and it follows a definite uh, defined protocol and the um, uh, the detailed protocol can be seen uh, in this publication. And we think that there's nothing better than participating in the study. Um, and we now um, perform this, uh, include all our patients for, for this trial. And it's, again, the largest um, funded random mass control trial in aortic aneurysm repair ever. Uh, 31 aortic reference centers are included. Uh, we uh, prospectively um, collect real-world data on spinal cord ischemia um, in these types of aneurysms and uh, patients can undergo either surgical or interventional um, aortic repair and um, evaluation of effectiveness of Mizaki is a prevention of um, spinal cord ischemia but also uh, in interventional cases prevention of endoleak type 2 which is also an um, important aspect. Uh, duration will be five years, 400 participants, and as I said, 31 uh, recruiting sites in nine countries. And these are the um, uh, centers um, participating majority of cases in Europe, but also in the US. And this is the uh, uh, protocol, uh, more detailed, you've seen this before. So the patients are screened, and the choice of uh, intervention, either uh, endovascular or open repair is um, is um, uh, given in, in, a, in a team decision and then an independent radiologist radio, uh, um, verifies the indication criteria. Patients are then randomized either to a conventional arm with no uh, staging and immediate um, um, procedure, either surgery or, or TVAR, or they enter the Mizake arm and they receive a first coiling and then uh, um, keep them in the hospital for three days on intermediate care for another one, two days normal ward. And then uh, after three weeks, um, a second, um, if necessary, a second Mizake procedure is performed. And if necessary, also a third Mizake procedure is performed and then um, they uh, undergo surgery or TIVA procedure uh, no later than five months after randomization and the first primary outcome is evaluated 30 days after intervention or uh, surgery and then end of studies one year at one year. This is the uh, status at the uh, 10th of February this year. We had included 184 uh, patients so far and uh, um, the first analyze will come out after we have um, included a, uh, 200 patients, so we're waiting for, for this. And uh, if you look at the type of extent of aneurysms which are included um, and the number of uh, endovascular vessels open surgery, it excellently represents the real world uh, um, data and, and situation. And uh, um, so far, luckily, we haven't had any uh, spinal cord ischemic uh, event after the Misaka procedure. Um, patients undergo a detailed uh, neurological assessment um, at uh, baseline and um, follow-up. And here you can see the numbers of uh, randomizations and patients included so far 10th of February this year. So final repair in the Misaka group, uh, 57 patients in the control group, uh, 73 primary outcome with this numbers of patients available in one year visit, um, uh, almost uh, 30 per, um, patients in each group. So if you want to have more, get more information about the Papa Artist trial, you can visit the, um, the website and uh, thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, Martin. This is excellent work and uh, we are also honored to participate. Uh, we are also in one of the highest recruiting uh, uh, centers in this study and um, I can only confirm that the patients who have been enrolled uh, in the Misace group are doing very well. What we have seen um, and we started doing this also outside the Papadis uh, trial uh, in our parinol and, and uh, uh, type 4 aneurysms that are not currently included in the study. Uh, we had one case of a patient that actually ruptured after the Misace. 
And that was, uh, thank God, for the study and for all our results. It was not included in, in, this, uh, in this study, but it was an unfortunate event of a younger uh, radiologist that was just starting doing these procedures. And the patient ruptured two days after the, the event. So I can assume that if these procedures are done but not from non-experienced uh, yeah. interventionalists, they can lead to severe problems. What is what is your take? Have you had any similar experiences? Fortunately, we haven't seen this, but it's important information. But uh, again, either by the uh, pediatric cardiologist or interventional radiologist who is familiar with you know putting cords in small vessels, even you know further up in small vessels in the brain, or the angiologist, which are at the University of Leipzig, very experienced. I think this procedure should be as you mentioned, performed by um, uh, colleagues who have a real expertise in this field, but not beginners. Hi, Martin. Uh, this is very exciting. Looking forward to seeing the results. Um, how, do you, how is it determined how many levels should be covered? Um, is it as many as possible? Yeah, um, a good question. So usually um, for uh, one Misaka procedure, you probably cover one or two segments. But um, obviously, uh, looking at the CT scan, we then decide how many sessions uh, the patients most likely uh, um, need to undergo. If um, we operate on the patient uh, who underwent this procedure, sometimes we see this kind of coils after we open the descending aorta, and still there's some minor back bleeding. I, I've seen this in some patients, so it's not probably total o o occlusion. So they uh, probably also depends on the size, but. Um, yeah, um, mainly we um, look at the CT scan and then decide how many sessions of Misaka the patients um, need. Uh, thanks for the great presentation, Professor Misfield. So I just uh, had a quick question about uh, the recruitment diagram that you put up. So this is a staged procedure, and one of the things we gain from the staging is reducing in spinal cord ischemia, but one of the things we lose is, I guess, an artificial delay in treatment time before we actually cure the aneurysm or whatever the, the, the aortopathy is. So first of all, have you experienced any inter-procedural death? And if so, is that a risk that has to be kind of understood during this procedure? Yeah, so it, um, obviously we only perform this in elective cases and uh, th this will be analyzed in the trial um, as well. So for emergency cases, we obviously don't do this kind of procedure or in urgent cases. Um, and then it's surgical-wise a completely different approach. And, and these um, urgent cases, I was also re-implant segmental arteries, which I don't do anymore in uh, patients um, who are entering this trial, except the ones in the control group. Um, but uh, this is obviously um, um, an important issue that you don't want to risk anything um, while the patient is undergoing this Misaka procedure. That's, again, why you um, really have to select the patient. But again, in urgent cases, you know, uh, we don't do this procedure, we don't perform it, and then follow the uh, reimplantation or all the um, uh, precautions we usually take. If I, if I may comment on that as well, we had that issue at the beginning of the experience and a big discussion because um, these are also not procedures that are always covered by, the, uh, by, uh, by reimbursement. The important is that you can do it with, a, with an interval of one to two weeks, and uh, that doesn't mean they always have to wait a month in between. Yeah, so in the anime model, so it was just one week in the PIC model, yeah, whereas now it's, you know, in the protocol, yeah. it's like three weeks, and, but you can shorten it. And in endovascular surgery, you're waiting for the graft of the patient uh, six to eight weeks anyway, yeah. so you're not really losing much time. And the, the um, concept is really not that some sort of new engine is, is developing within this short time one week, but you know, I'm pretty sure you open some sort of collateral network and we've seen this kind of parallel arrangement of the arteries, which most likely have an impact also on improved blood supply. Um. Thank you. Uh, one is now quite complicated now because when we are building the kind of protocol at the time, endovascular kind of procedures are one stage procedure and the surgery one stage. Now, endovascular kind of therapy becoming routinely stage procedure. TVA first waited 12 weeks and then that. So when you come to, to analyze the data between the open and the endo with the kind of Misaki and non-Misaki and also stage without staging, 
and that effect on the endovascular kind of group, including or control groups. So it'd be difficult to, to compare even with the open and endo and then that to for the kind of control group even. So yeah, don't know how we're going to analyze that data. Well, um, uh, excellent question and important aspect. And sometimes, our, I mean, stage approach in endovascular is probably more um, you know, easier to perform than an open surgery, yeah. but some patients you still have to do it um, as a one procedure, even in endovascular because of, you know, getting proper landing zone, et cetera. But this is an important aspect. Um, and uh, I don't have the answer. So sometimes you um, compare um, probably uh, results you cannot compare, yeah, especially the endovascular, but we will see it from the first and um, final analysis of this trial, whether you know, this is um, in the same when necessary for endovascular approach as is it for surgical approach. I suspect so group will be too small to power enough to, to Could be. come with a yeah. kind of good con conclusion. Maybe Tristan had to worry about his first. No, we don't need to worry. <laughs> Thank you. Just one more question. Continuing the argument about the artery of Demkovitz, do you see a dominant vessel when these people are having their um, vessels imaged? Well, I haven't specifically, to be honest, looked at it. Yeah, probably the Adam Kiewicz artery is also included in this kind of coiling procedure, but um, I cannot recall that we specifically uh, record whether we have coiled it or not. 